Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 425. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to uh, review the questions and answers given on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. And with us tonight we have Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of uh, uh, wasaweb.net. He's also a Google product expert. Uh, in the AdSense uh, community. He's based in Wimbledon, uh, in London. David Roseanne, when he stops hitting the keyboard. <laughs> um, that David uh, is a leading internet marketer. He's based uh, in uh, West Sussex, uh, in the sunny south of the UK. Um, David can be found at davidrosam.com. Masataki can be found at wasaweb.net. W-A-S-A-W-E-B.net. And Tim Capper is CEO of onlineownership.com. He's based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Uh, he is also a Google product expert on the um, Google My Business community. Um, you can find Tim at onlineownership.com. All right, um, we have nine questions tonight. Uh, here is our first, it's from Hilary May. Uh, and she's, uh, it's titled, Why Aren't Either Showing Up in My List of Backlinks? Hilary goes on to write, uh, so I have two killer um, DF um, backlinks I landed in the last month. One is to a site with uh, an 89 uh, DA. It's a, a, a term from, uh, I think, Moz, isn't it? Um, anyway, another is a 60. There are also leagues above me in every other metric you can think of, if that makes a difference to you. So why aren't either showing up in my list of uh, backlinks? Um, um, I know Google uh, has uh, indexed both pages and I know the links aren't broken and go directly to my site. It's been a month for one and uh, one and, and two and a half weeks for the other. What gives? Google Search Console doesn't show all your links. It just shows a selection. If you want to see all your links, um, but also third party tools also only show you a selection because mm -hmm. they ultimately have to trawl the entire web to see what's coming to you. So um, just because it's not showing up there doesn't mean, you know, you said they indexed, job done. There you go. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to, need to worry about. Thank you, Tim. All right, let's roll on to number two on our run list. This one's from Perry. He said, I have a total of 79 combinations of country and language pages. Um, Perry said, uh, huge thanks for the help today. Uh, I now have one last thing on this case. Uh, a bit be, I'm a bit confused by what is asked for, to be honest. I would love some thoughts again. Legends, I tell you, this guy gets more likable every every minute, doesn't he? Um, anyway, he said that he'd love some thoughts again. Legends, um, they need help. Here it is. And um, the client X has a total of 79 combinations of country and language page, pages. Is the, implement, is the implementation technically correct? Not sure how you'd know without diving into it to knowing these folders have a variable amount of authority, SEO traffic and non-SEO traffic, um, with some of them receiving no traffic at all, some of them receiving traffic but not SEO traffic, and some of them being quite healthy. Would you recommend any changes that would uh, improve uh, received site quality, crawling and indexation? Thanks, uh, if anyone can. Um, <clears throat> so essentially, I think you need to... Uh, well, uh, I'll just start at the end there. So crawling and indexation, check your search console. Uh, you can just whack in 
any random page and it'll tell you if it's indexed. So that's pretty much it. Also, the way to you know do that is potentially generate um, language sitemap sitemaps and submit those individually to Search Console. So every time a language section is updated, the URL gets updated and Google automatically knows about it. The other way to check with hreflang, there's quite a few tools out there that will check your hreflang across the site for you. There's Systrix, there's um, Screaming Frog, there's hreflang checker, but that's not the entire site. SEMrush, um, yeah, you know, things like that. Um, you know, third party tools will, 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 will crawl through and check that for you. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, I like the idea of submitting um, sitemaps for different languages because then that then you have a very good overview of what's been indexed and what's crawled but not indexed, which you see in the Search Console. And that yeah, yeah. it is handy. I use that for um, a couple of my hotels. Uh, although they don't have 79 combinations, we are only dealing with uh, uh, eight languages at the minute, but it's still it's enough. Yeah, I think hreflang is probably going to be important in this case because I have a feeling that there will be um, pages for different countries but in the same language. So let's say English page for UK for Ireland for the US etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah if that's the case then nature funds would be pretty important with a massive one like this the one I always like to use as an example is American Express they've got their nature flying down to a final across all countries and languages true okay let's um, move on now to number three on our run list this one is from Paniitis Theodolu. Um, how do I keep my backlinks uh, when uh, a website redesign occurs? Uh, is the title. Um, it's also the question. Um, it has been answered on uh, the, the uh, Facebook group uh, by Stock, Stockbridge Trustlow as. Uh, keep the URLs the same or keep track of the ones you change and redirect the old URLs to the new URLs. Um, guys, what, what, what further advice do you have for Paniatus? Yeah, I, Stockbridge has, uh, has said it. Um, I think I would have uh, said it at greater length, but uh, I think what he says is right. Um, you know, website redesign. Um, you know, if, if it's a so it's a WordPress site, we have lots of WordPress sites uh, that we have questions about. Let's pretend it's a WordPress site or a CMS like that. Um, a redesign will just be the theme. Um, the URL, the URL structure won't change. But if your website redesign um, involves a change of platform, uh, you may not be able to emulate the, you. <coughs> excuse me, the URL structure of the uh, um, of the site on whatever platform it was on previously, or whatever platform it's on now, uh, rather. Um, and in that case, uh, you need to uh, get your spreadsheet out and uh, look at the URLs and do some three hundred one redirects to keep everything um, to keep everything in place. Thank you, David. Okay, let's move on to number four on our run list. Um, I don't know. Um, is that, is that um, anyway? I should have looked, done my homework and had a look at that. Um, anyway, question four is how much will redirection affect search engine optimization? Um, Yeah, and that's that's pretty much the question. Perry Bernard has um, um, put an answer in. Uh, 
Sorry, but Anne said the www version is, is a different website in Google's view. Um, as with any subdomain, that you should follow all the recommendations you might use to migrate to any new domain. If your site had a mix of use and already redirected one version to the other, then probably the impact won't be too bad. However, if Google did not ever crawl uh, uh, any non-canonical versions before, the impact um, will be greatest. Um, it it shouldn't, uh, in my view, cause too much havoc. Um, I think it's good uh, practice to to not have dub 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 and non dub 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 coexisting on a website uh, because you're likely to get uh, Google thinking you've got duplication of content. Um, so um, I would go ahead and do it. I think. Um, Richard Hearn says more about it on the page there. Um, and I'm sure that Richard Hearn has said sensible things. Oh, he's actually said what I've just said. So, so that's good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, um, I think that's about it. All right. Anybody else? Yeah, if done properly, it shouldn't cause too much problem. Um, you might just want to find out what Google thinks is the canonical URL at the moment, which you can find out by going to your search console and entering an example uh, page. Then it would, you know, then it would, um, I think, give you information about which um, URL it considers as the canonical at the moment. Thank you, Mr. Taki. All right, let's roll on to um, number five. It's titled, My Posts Aren't Eligible for Rich Results. It's from Rudolf Ladyzinski. Uh, he said, I have a handful of posts that aren't eligible for rich results. So I can't for the life of me uh, figure out why. Um, do you have any ideas? Mm. Well, I suspect that um, uh, I would uh, I would skip over to the uh, Google Rich Results tool and uh, and test the pages to see if. Uh, if your code is set up correctly. Um, why would they not be eligible for its results? What's the situation where you would get not eligible? Are you just saying not eligible because um, they're not appearing in rich results? Or is there a situation where you would get that non eligibility? Not one I can think of. Can someone help me? Yeah, I, I, I think um, you've covered it, um, David. Um, yeah, we don't we don't have enough information here. Is it the actual post that they are expecting to have a rich result on, or is Search Console saying not eligible for rich results? In which case, test your schema. What is the schema? Uh, what's the error? Where you're getting not eligible? So. There's a myriad of things here. Yeah. Mm. I mean, they're using a recipe. Does that mean they're not having the image with the time, the length? Like, there's, there's, there's a ton of things, um, variations or possibilities. Right. I see we, we, we still have this issue um, with our uh, scraping software that's not, um, not, not working the way we'd like it to. We'll get back onto that this week. Here's one from Razan Singh. It's question six on our run list. It's titled, uh, She is only interested in results for England 
Um, what that means is that uh, the client uh, um, is, is only interested in, in the search engine results page for um, the UK. Um, anyway, Roseanne goes on to say, hello, everyone. Uh, please read this and help me out if you can. Uh, the niche is legal. My, my client would like to rank a keyword, but she's only interested in the results for England. I don't think I can get that term, but if I can improve another variation of that keyword, um, that um, would be good. I have a lot of those terms already, but in local. So Brighton, Braintree, Croydon, etc. I'd also like London because they have two branches there. Uh, please give me some suggestions. Thanks. Uh, what was the initial thing? She's got a what in where? What? She's got uh, three locations. What is it? Yeah, two, two, two locations in um, London. And um, it looks like a, a couple of suburb, suburbia. Uh, oh. down there okay, with, so, um, so, if, so if these are legitimate locations, then they can each have a business profile. Um, each location, uh, like I'm assuming you have one website, I don't know what it is, um, but each should have a location page. If they're, you know, um, for that particular, for, for that particular location. Um, and then I, I don't know what you, what you do. So, you know, there's, there's a myriad of things you can, um, you, you, you can do there's um uh business specific related questions and answers which can be on site um i don't know you know if you do nails there can be video content there can be loads of different content but ideally your first thing is if you've got three uh locations should be essentially um three location pages on your site so your main site is your brand and then you have location pages um which will appear for those areas optimized for 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 the location um a google my business profile for each of those locations um and and then essentially you're going to be looking at content content that converts the user during the purchasing journey what do people what do people think about when they think about your product or service? What is the questions they ask um, and what do they do? Can you create um, work profiles like, uh, I mean, yeah, it would be easier if I knew what you did, but um, could you create like case studies, uh, or, or, you know, um, for particular areas? Um, is each area slightly different in terms of what you serve? Or what you service so you need to provide that content um, ideally on those location pages um, do you have different teams in those locations you know th those would be slightly different on those locations um, what convert you know do what do people wake up in the morning do they think I don't know let's just say you you're a nail bar um, you know like <sighs> the main thing that people are going to be querying is um i suppose they don't just say nails i suppose they'll ask for like uh who does shellac nail polish you know make sure that you've got all your services or the, the individual niche product or services not just nails you know uh roshan's nails and that's it just like kind of one page with with three location pages make sure you're providing individualized um types you know um i don't know what other kind of bloody nails they are but do, do you see what i mean you, you know you need to provide that kind of oh here we go the legal field oh, so i'm guessing it's legal yeah so yeah definitely um look i mean tosso is going quite a lot on schema 
sure, make sure that each individual location in that business is marked up for legal. Um, make sure your services are particularly marked up. Make sure that it's all talking with your location pages so that people can easily find. Um, and specifically, like, does one just do criminal law, one just do family, one just mainly property? Make sure that people can navigate through specifically. Also on your service pages, where you talk about all the individual entities, make sure it's linking through to find your nearest office uh, because it may not be the one office, it may be the other two. So, you know, make sure that you are, you know, directing the users properly across your site via service and location. Thank you, Tim. Excellent. Um, let's move on to number seven. Chris Wu um, has one titled, I don't know how to improve the keyword ranking. I don't think that's true. Um, Chris, Chris Wu, uh, or maybe it's not the Chris Wu I'm thinking of. Um, he said, I don't know how to improve the keyword ranking of the website. Any good suggestions? Thanks. So he gives his website as double Z K E D A dot com. Um, Stockbridge Trustlow, uh, um, he um, uh, contributed that. Uh, um, he said, your content, content is mainly products and mostly products, but you have exactly zero structured data on that site. Um, I'd be starting there. It's a very specialized sort of business to business kind of site, isn't it? The thing that jumps out on me here straight away is I can't find a page for the manufacturer. Okay. Well, it uh, well, the, because uh, everything here is saying like your homepage says you it's for manufacturers and suppliers in China. So first off, you're telling me that this is a multitude of different ones. Like I can see new images, one ZK, I see another one for KD. Come on, that one open. ZZKEDA.com, is that what you're asking? Yeah, I mean, it does seem to be a manufacturer website. It has a sort of about us section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm um, no, but these are these. So the very first thing I saw is this is manufacturers and suppliers, right? But everything I click on is ZZKD. But I can see in other images that there are KD stuff, that there are slightly different things. So if you are manufacturers and suppliers, then where are these other brands? Right. That's what I'm saying, because mm -hmm. people will typically search for X, Y, Z manufacturer medical equipment. Right. Because they, if they know a brand or they know one that's with good reputation, they typically search that. So that's something you're missing out on. If you are just doing ZZKD stuff, then I would look at rewording, looking at your actual stuff, your titles, things like that. Um, everything you start off with ZZKD, like all your products is specialized in manufacturing, selling, like, <sighs> I 
yeah, the branding is a bit, I mean, so there's the Tata Machinery Equipment Company Limited, which is mentioned in the About Us section, and I assume is the manufacturer. But it's trading as the ZKD instrument. Or is it? It says it's a pharmaceutical equipment integration company. Does that mean it's buying buying kit in from other manufacturers and integrating them into a a particular oh. solution? Oh, so they oh, so you're saying they're manufacturing the finished product, assembling the end. Finish, yeah, that's um, what, the parts. That's what it appears. That that would seem to to um, explain the the various pitches. The other thing I looked at, I saw, I've just clicked in your navigation here onto reactor equipment. Now, your title, for example, is laboratory reactor equipment. Okay, your H1 on page, which is what you've set in your actual, I mean, I don't know what CMS, but it's just called reactor equipment. I'd probably try and get laboratory reactor equipment in there. There is zero content on this page apart from the product. Um, I, I would try and provide some information on there. What are people looking at here? Are these, you know, like what, like what kind of, I mean, I'm sure you don't provide every kind, just give them some kind of idea on what, 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 what you provide on the page. Um, what are the quality specs you look at before you supply or distribute or whatever? Um, just something on the page, like literally your laboratory reactor equipment page is just product. There's nothing on it and zero. Um, I'm going to guess clicking on other stuff. They're all the same. Vacuum drying oven. Yeah, exactly the same. Like there's zero, nothing on that page. Like, what are your specs? What are you selling? Like, who are you selling it to? Uh, who's going to buy this? What, you know, why would they want to buy or look at your product? Like, do you see what I mean? You literally got nothing on this. Yeah. We call this one a wrap. Yeah. Okay. No, Chris, you don't need guest posts on your site, mate. Just work on the site. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to number eight on our run list. Lucky number eight. Uh, Tim Brownson um, has asked the question title, the keyword density was super important for a decade or more. No, it wasn't. Um, yeah, he said that then it became less less important, almost to the point of irrelevance. If that's correct, and I'm only repeating what I've read, why do SEO tools pimp it? It's brought up in Rank Math and Yoast, and I heard an interview with a guy on uh, Authority um, Hacker a few months ago, who said it was important to align keyword density with the pages uh, you are looking to add rank. I can't remember the name of his company other than it was Eastern Europe. And ironically, I cannot find it on Google. And your thoughts are? That it's very easy to, uh, to compute um, keyword density, very easy to work it out. Um, you don't need very much in the way of software to do it um so it's a very easy tool to provide um the uh the the SE, the seo tool providers haven't got google's um uh, artificial intelligence uh um 
abilities, shall we say. Um, so something simple is punted. And the other thing is, I, I, I looked at a, a site. <laughs> I looked at a site, quite a big site, been around a long. Um, I was looking at one this week where the owner has, God knows over how many years, made sure he's got green lights everywhere in Yoast, everywhere. So when you actually look at the page, it's freaking atrocious. You've got the, the, the title. You've got, you know, um, oh, and don't forget with Yoast, if you haven't put in this like little keyword thing, uh, whatever they call it, uh, keyword into that, like your, your green light will never show up. It's just like little stupid things like that. Then, of course, the more times you shove in this keyword, uh, because they've got no understanding of, of, of variations, plural, semantic, contextual, uh, unless you've got that one singular freaking phrase you shove in there, you don't get a green light. It is, look, as David said, because it's the most piss easiest thing to work out, um, but it makes for a shit user experience. Uh, and essentially the first thing I ever do if when I start working on a client, if they happen to have WordPress, I turn that off from display so that the client doesn't get, you know, so the client writes normally, naturally, covers a multitude of variations of the topic, right, in natural written word that they know best about rather than trying to get a freaking green light, which ends up looking atrocious. Very good. Uh, probably some of the best advice we've ever had on on this uh, recording. Okay, so will we call that an answer for Tim Brownson and move on to the next? Recording that as a yes. Uh, this one for Scott Henderson. Um, it's titled "Just the Home Page," or is it necessary to add it? to all pages uh, he's referring to schema markup he said uh, we have a local piano studio and are wanting to mark up the pages i know that there is a local business markup available um do i add this to just the home page or is it necessary uh, to add it to um, all uh, pages See, Richard Hearn, uh, he said, uh, home page is fine. I would not expect to gain too much from adding this. It won't hurt, but unlikely to draw more traffic. Bill Hartz has said, I would add it to all pages. Uh, you, you can uh, also add other schema markup code as well. Yeah, look, if it's a single business, single local business, you know, yeah, chuck it across site. But then just all you need to do is make sure that you are marking up the other pages. So your contact page, mark that up as about, you know, contact about us. Um, your individual products or services, make sure that you mark those up individually. Um, but, you know, ideally, a lot of these, like, it depends what you're doing. So, for example, if you are a chiropractor, you know, and you're offering, I don't know, back pain treatment, that particular service, back, you know, treatment for back pain, would ideally fall within your service provided by XYZ local business. It is essentially kind of nested within the same, but slightly different because with that kind of structured data, you're saying it's this service provided by this business. But essentially, you, and unless you create it that way, you can't create, I suppose you could create a secondary service schema for that particular service, but you can't nest it within that business if you chuck it just site wide. So um, uh, ideally, if you could look at 
the individual page and then properly nest it. But if you don't have the capability of doing that, chucking it completely site-wide, it's not going to do any, it's not going to cause any issues. But just remember, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit pedantic about schema is meant to mark up what's on a page. So if you're using local business schema, which contains the address, telephone number, uh, you know, your hours, contact, um, things like that, make sure it's running across like in the footer of the site, because in, in essence, you're not actually marking up if it's not on across the site. So that like, that's my bugbear is people chuck in all sorts of stuff that just doesn't even exist on page. Um, that that's my biggest bugbear. So yeah, but it's not going to make a prob if you if you can't do individual, you know, um, structured data for each individual service or product. Um, it, it, it won't, you know, just have it running across site. Thank you, Tim. All right, I've got a feeling that um, when um, I click this button, it'll be thank you for watching time. We'll be back uh, at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again. Um, but before I go, we must thank you guys first. Uh, Masataki Wasa, David Razam, Jim Kappa, thank you so much. And also, uh, the people that answer questions through the week, um, uh, George uh, G and um, Michael Martinez and Stockbridge Truslow, Bill Hartzer, um, all of the people that answer questions as they uh, are placed on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group and make it uh, such a valuable resource. Anyway. Uh, as I said, we'll be gone as soon as I can figure out how to turn this off.